Hi, Hi. I'm Claire Olson. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I enjoyed your picture enormously. Oh, okay. You sort of that you saw the. Uh, Can I just get you to unbutton instead of the finished version? Well, I tell you, it didn't really matter. It got lots of laughs. Okay. This is live, did I hear this? No. Oh, no, it's a half hour oh. syndicated. Uh, well, tell me, who is Pee Wee Herman? Where did he come from? How did he evolve? Well, I, I've been working in Los Angeles for about six years professionally. Um, we're the comedy group originally called The Groundlings. It's kind of like Second City up here. And um, it just evolved that. I started working with a lot of toys and a lot of props, and then I did a show that involved a lot of toys and props with other characters. So it was kind of a kiddie show, more aimed at adults, but, but really a straight out kiddie show. And then from there, um, I was offered a deal to write a movie for Warner Brothers. So I wrote the movie and, and with two other people and starred in it. <laughs> and um, it's, it's all gone from there to, you know, become a, well, what I hope is going to be a big hit. Don't know yet because it's not open yet. But. Well, it must be driving the marketing man and PR people wild because it, it has a certain charm for children. They're going to laugh their heads off. They're going to howl with delight. I hope so. Uh, Marcel <laughs> Marceau feeling, Jerry Lewis says Jerry Lewis wishes he could have been, and, <laughs> and adults will respond to it too. Now, uh, what what about this this film, Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Tell us a little about it. Well, it's basically it's the story of what happens when my most prized possession in the whole world, my bicycle, which is not only my my favorite thing and my transportation, all that, but it's my hobby, you know, souping it up and customizing. It's a very special bike, not not one that everybody has, but one that most everybody wants, and it gets stolen. And so the, the, the whole plot of the movie really is, is what happens when it gets stolen and how I get it back. It's kind of what I call a quest film. Some quest. Yeah. Also, Pee Wee, <laughs> your house, that incredible house. I, I think it might appeal to older people, too, because of the nostalgia involved. Have you ever heard of Rube Goldberg? Sure, yeah. Well, I don't. I, I haven't seen Rube, Rube Goldberg's cartoons for so long. I mean, they d just brought back. My goodness, look at Rube Goldberg on film. Is that where you got some of these goofy ideas? Or yeah, yeah, I have a Rube Goldberg book at home, and it has drawings of all his gizmos and machines and stuff. And so I really wanted to use something along those lines. And the cartoons picked up that stuff from Rube Goldberg also and there was a lot I was influenced a lot by cartoons so there's a lot of blending there you know between cartoon kind of images and the stuff Rube Goldberg did which was actually cartoon also so oh sure it was are you kind of poking fun at consumerism at uh, the uh, the the quest for gadgets in North America I never thought of it like that. It's possible. It could have been going on subconsciously. <laughs> How about you? This film is, uh, there's a lot of satire in it, or at least adults find so. As I said, kids just laugh, but mm -hmm. adults find satire. How much is conscious or unconscious with the comedian? I think probably a lot of it is unconscious, um, only because I, when I hear you talking about it, there's these, a lot of these are things that I didn't think of, but I don't disagree with you, you know what I mean? There mm -hmm. are things that I, I don't really think of myself as a satirist as much as just, I don't know what I think of myself as, but I don't really look at it as satire, but I see where it could be looked at as satire. Um, to me, it's, it's just a straight out story and it's funny, but I don't know exactly why it's funny. Well, I I don't know why it's funny, too, but there's an enormous innocence about it. And, of course, it's very original humor. Why do girls, why do all women seem to fall in love with Pee Wee? Well, 
That's one of those things I hate to think about too much because I'm afraid it'll be all over if I analyze it too much, but <laughs> it's really been working out good. I have to practically beat the women up with a stick now, you know, try to rip my clothes off all the time and that kind of stuff. You don't resist too hard, do you? <laughs> Are you married, Claire? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, yes, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, you, of course, have wonderful characters in this film. The, just one delight after another, but yet you carry the film yourself. Where did you pick up these characters, uh, the, and uh, have you worked with them before? Well, I worked with some of the people before. Um, there's an escaped convict in the film, and he was somebody who I'd worked with quite a while ago. And um, then, then the, uh, one of the villains in the film, and um, the girl who plays my girlfriend in the film, were people that I just met working on this, but who I will more than likely be working with again, just because they were so good and so fun to work with. Do you, would you entertain the idea of a weekly TV show? Well, I was hoping to have a weekly, mm, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was hoping to have a weekly TV show several years ago. I had a kiddie show in Los Angeles that was a live stage show where I had this wacky playhouse and, and different people would come by and stop by and it was, it was kind of a pilot, it was a stage pilot for a TV show. But I couldn't get anybody to make it into a TV show at the time and now since you know, I'm becoming a big movie star and everything, I figured you know, I'd really just stick with the movies and you know, maybe a, what we call in, in the States M.O.W. Movie of the Week, you know, that kind of thing. But a, t a weekly show, as I'm sure you know yourself, is, is a lot of work. Oh, know? especially if you have to create all the humor. And, yeah. uh... and I'm basically, you know, kind of a lazy person, so, you know, making a movie, you can, you work very hard and you work, you know, six months writing it and then two months shooting it and then couple of months, you know, putting it all together and stuff, but then you have a vacation for a while. <laughs> so yes. uh, I, I like that schedule. Pee Wee, this obviously was your invention, this film. It must have come out of your, your head, your brain. Mm -hmm. When you went to the studio, went to Warner Brothers and talked to the heads and said, I want to make this film, they must have thought you were crazy. No, you know, that's what I would have thought too, but for some reason, that's not what they did. They, we worked, me and two friends of mine, we worked for about six months writing the script based more or less on a true story of that happened to me when my bicycle was actually stolen. And we wrote the script and we turned it into Warner Brothers and then I went and visited my family for a week while the studio was reading it and I, you know, nervously waiting for their, their reaction. And then they just called up and they said, okay, fine, go ahead. Make the movie. So they didn't even, we didn't rewrite it or do anything. They just said, okay, go ahead, start. So that was a big surprise. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe they're more cracked than you, know, than you would think that they were working at that studio, but they just went and said okay right away. Well, that's nice. I had heard that they're just accountants running the, uh, mind you, they must know what they're doing. That's what I had heard too, too, but I don't think it's true. I think what we've heard is untrue because, boy, they, they wanted to make it right away, so I maybe they'll that. be accountants after if, if it's not <laughs> successful. <laughs> oh, I think it'll be successful. We mentioned, I, I mentioned uh, Marcel uh, Marceau, mm -hmm. the famous mime. Were you a mime? Did you study uh, no. mime? Mm -mm. No, I never studied mime. I've seen Marcel Marceau on TV and stuff. Uh, because you see... He's generally on TV, right? And he yes. doesn't do much radio work because... No. <laughs> <laughs> and who, when you were growing up, who were your favorite stars? I mean, where did oh, you just about develop all, your comedy? All the stars. I, I, I was so, so... Um, I just loved Hollywood when I was little. You know, I used to watch old movies on TV and go to the movie theater and watch a lot of the old television in fact, I still do in the States. We have um, the Christian Broadcasting Network shows all the old television shows at night. So I watch that a lot. And I, I grew up with um, I Love Lucy and I Married Joan and um, a lot of the Phil Silver's show, mm -hmm. um, Jackie Gleason, 
Um, but Jerry Lewis, you have you have a touch of the of the Jerry mm -hmm. Lewis manic, yeah, sort of uh, laughter and 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 zany comedy. I can't deny it. <laughs> well, he uh, he was enormously successful in France and in Europe. I imagine you will be enormously successful there too, uh, because you you just have something that that appeals to the French apart from uh, an American audience. Have you been to France yet? Well, I was I was to France a long time ago when I was little, just long enough to catch the Eiffel Tower and Arc de Triomphe and you know that stuff. But I haven't really seen much of it, so I'm looking forward to hopefully that they'll release the film there and I'll get to go and you know look around a little bit. I wonder what the Japanese are going to think of. I'm Pee going Herman. to Japan pretty soon. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, not for the movie's release because it hasn't been decided when it's going to be released there yet. But in the um, MTV, you know, the all music mm -hmm. station, they just had a big contest for winning a big adventure with Pee Wee Herman. So I, so me and a contest winner that was selected at the big premiere last week are going to four spots. We're going to Tokyo, Anchorage, Alaska. New Zealand and the island of Bora Bora. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I can't imagine how you would translate into Japanese. Yeah, uh, me neither. That must be, that, <laughs> I, I'd be fascinated to see A, how the Japanese react, and B, how you would sound with, a, with Japanese. Yeah. Um, well, I'm starting my Japanese lessons next week, so I'll be able to do all the dubbing, you know, because it takes a while to learn Japanese. It's a pretty complicated <laughs> language. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think is next for Pee Wee Herman? Well, I'm starting a record album. Um, I'm going on a little vacation, and then I'm going to start a record album. I'm going to become a recording artist and sing songs. I'm going to try to sing as many different styles as I can, a rap song, rock and roll, ballad, um, country western, Spanish, as many different styles as I can. And then while I'm working on that, I'm planning right now, it's a very early planning stages, but I hope to have the first groundbreaking ceremonies in February for my new amusement park in Hollywood. It's going to be called Pee Wee Land. And it's going to be kind of, you know, the rickety version of Disneyland, you know, more, more small in scale. Probably very small in scale, maybe right in my backyard if the movie isn't a big hit. But, <laughs> but hopefully it's going to be a big hit and then I can build it larger. And that Rube Goldberg sort of thing where all, all kinds of uh, crazy inventions and... Yeah, it could be on a much bigger scale than the movie even, you know, it could be giant Rube Goldberg stuff, you know? And lots of magic. Yeah. And all those funny, oh, that, that would be a great idea. That would be fun. Yeah. Then it'll be informational kind of stuff like the Pee Wee Hall of Fame, chronicling famous Pee Wees throughout history, and maybe a robot Pee Wee, so I wouldn't have to be there all the time, you know, but, but I could have shows with, you know, my robot would be, you know, doing my stuff. And of course, then maybe the robot would be more successful. I mean, maybe I shouldn't have a robot. What do you think? It would be better to be there live, not have to compete with a robot. I don't probably. think you could develop a robot that would <laughs> be anything like you. You're unique. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Probably. Yeah, probably a robot's a crummy idea. <laughs> now, if, I'm sure that you have many ideas for many films mm -hmm. in that fertile brain of yours. <laughs> will, they, will they all relate to your adventures and uh, your, your experiences in... Uh... I think so, yeah. I think there'll probably be adventure stories, you know, different things happening. Um, my next one, I hope, is gonna be based on a script that I wrote about a year ago that's all based on a story that, that isn't even in this world. It's a whole different world. It's oh, really? More, outer space? Yeah. No, it's not outer space. It's more... It's more like just a different world, but not an outer space world. It's a familiar world, but more like a fantasy land type mm -hmm, of thing. Mm -hmm. So, I wish you'd keep a diary and make a movie of Pee Wee Goes to Japan. That <laughs> That's would a good be idea, fun. yeah. Uh, I should think that would be fun. Yeah. It'd be difficult to film, though, because, you know, the wires and stuff involved, because everyone's upside down there, right? You really are crazy. You're such a delight. I know you are, but what am I? 
Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Is that enough time, Ivan? Thank <laughs> Thanks very, very Thank much. You. You're fun. charming Thank to talk you. to. <laughs> Can't wait to go to Pee Wee Land. Well, you have to sit down and go. Oh yes. Opening.